Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight I want to talk to you about Iran, Yemen, Bahrain, Libya, Mexico, Wisconsin. There is chaos all around, around the globe, pockets of an instability. It is caused by unions, food prices, believe it or not, in Iran, crazy town, 12th Imam, they're talking now about a united Islamic state, or at least a conference to try to cobble that together. Iran is sending ships towards Egypt right now. We have students on the streets in country after country after country. Google seems to be playing a role with our government. And this is the one word that says it all. Evil. Unrest. Chaos. Evil. Spreading around the globe. It is the coming insurrection. Come on. <clears throat> Hello, America. I have to tell you, I know I get a lot of heat on this program. I don't really care. Um, I'm going to tell you what I really think is going on. What I think is going on is there is growing evil on this planet. It is, um, it is so transparent and clear to anybody who cares to recognize it. And I think the average person does, but nobody wants to say that on TV because, you know, that's crazy talk. Over the past few years, we have talked, talked about revolutionaries all around the world. And we have told you about this two years ago, the coming insurrection. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's still not too late. This is one of the most evil books I've ever read, but you should read it. Um, you'll, you'll know how they think. It's why we can predict what's happening in the world on this program, because we take them at their word. Now, you have told your friends about the activists all around the world that wish to create chaos and grab power. Some days, these revolutionaries were just talking about it, but today, they are doing it. I want to give a recap real quick on what we had told you on day one of the coming insurrection, day one of the riots and the unrest in Egypt. I told you that radical Islamist communist socialists would work together against Israel, work together against capitalism, work together against uh, to overturn stability. And all of these things are happening. Then I told you part two would be protests would become contagious. This is, I mean, if you thought that this was ridiculed, oh boy. Oh, now Glenn Beck says it's going to spread from uh, Egypt. Yes, I did. I said they would cascade, they would sweep the Middle East, and then they would begin to destabilize Europe and the rest of the world. Well, were you right? Can you go to your friends and tell your friends that you are right yet? Well, let's take a look around the world at some of the images. Let's look at what we have. Riots, unrest. This one is Libya, this one is Iran, this one is Yemen, this one is Mexico. And this one is, of course, the ever-stable Bahrain, the home of the Fifth Fleet. Now, what we hear from our Western media, in fact, let's not even go to the media, let's go to our own president. And this is what we hear. What we ended up seeing was a peaceful transition, relatively little violence, and relatively little, if any, anti-American sentiment. Oh my gosh. Or anti-Israel sentiment, or anti-Western sentiment. Yep. I'm sure that's just finger paint there. This goes back to what we talked about. If everybody is so convinced that this is a wonderful success, how are they judging it? On this program, we are going to judge it this way. The president hit on a couple of questions I, I feel we need to have answered before we could make a judgment. But this is the way this program is going to judge it. And if these things turn out to be better for America, then I'll stand here and tell you, okay, luckily, didn't happen. But let's judge it by this. Do we see a positive or negative change in the way Egypt is dealing with us? Egypt deals with Israel and is the, the expression of Islamic extremist rhetoric. Do we see human rights violations? Is the government increasing or decreasing the rights of women and the rights of religious minorities? That's the way we will judge it. Let's take the uh, human rights. Evidence of human rights violations. Are we seeing it? Well, put those five boxes back up on the, the board. You tell me. You should see what's happening in Libya today where they're just gunning people down in the streets. 
Oh, we're seeing human rights violations. Big time. In Iran, they're calling for the execution of anybody that speaks out, and they're rounding people up. Human rights violations. Well, let's go to Egypt. Yes, yes, we are. Um, without getting into the horrifying specifics, mainly for this individual's family, um, we know that there were at least 300 people killed, countless injured and abused. And while we were watching this jubilant scene, you remember this on Friday? And this was the only program we were mocked and ridiculed. I said, don't pay attention to this scene. Don't do it. We, th this is the beginning. This isn't the end. While everyone was saying, oh, listen, this is great. In this crowd, we found out today that American woman was being sexually assaulted, sexually assaulted by 200 men in this crowd. She was rescued by the second class citizens, women, and 20 members of the military. More on this in just a minute. Do we see a negative, a negative change or a positive change in the way that Egypt is dealing with Israel? Well, let's watch this video. This is a high-profile Egyptian dissident, um, Aman Nauer. He's a guy, he's saying here um, on Egyptian television, that he believes the best option, and this is our best option for leadership in the new uh, Egypt, believe it or not, he says the best thing that they can do is when it comes to the Camp David Accords, they've got to come to an end, but we should have a referendum on the peace treaty with Israel. Now let me ask you, how's that going to work out? The favorability in Egypt for the peace accords with Iran, or with uh, um, um, uh, Israel, is 3%. 3% favorable, 92% unfavorable. How do you think that's going to work out? Do you think that's going to be positive or negative for Israel? Do we see Egyptian politicians outwardly expressing Islamic extremist rhetoric? Well, let's look at the people from the groups like the Muslim Brotherhood. Are they gaining power? Well, let's see. The judge who is heading up the commission to write the new Egyptian constitution, you bet. He's, I mean, he's practically Thomas Jefferson. He's an outspoken Muslim Brotherhood politician. Oh, and let's not forget that the Muslim Brotherhood has also announced that it intends to form a political party of their own, which is wonderful since the Brotherhood's current leader just wrote an article in September on the group's website in which he said of the U.S. that a nation that does not champion moral and human values cannot lead humanity and its wealth will not avail it once Allah has had his say. Oh, this is fantastic, isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you saw the video, you can find it at glenbeck.com, of, uh, of uh, uh, President Carter who you know is such a supporter of Israel. Do we have it? Oh, I just love it. We're going to get to it here in a second. I'll finish that in a second. In Egypt, we have discussed the situation in Egypt, and we have told you that it would inspire activists and revolutionaries all around the world. And we said the protests would become contagious, and it would cascade and sweep the Middle East. Watch. This is great. We'll show you the chart in a second. But first on the Muslim Brotherhood, we're ready with the tape now of Jimmy Carter. Here he is just the other night on the Muslim Brotherhood. Here it is. I think that the Muslim Brotherhood are not anything to be afraid of in the upcoming political situation or evolution that I see. Yeah. He, 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 in that, he was also saying that well, they're absolutely in with terrorists, but politically, nothing to worry about. Oh, okay. All right. Let me show you. Um, let me show you the map again, and let me show you all the protesters. Let me start in Libya. Here's Libya. Libya protesters are demanding the overthrow of the government as they clash with security forces, chanting "No Allah, No God, but Allah." Oh, look! Can you turn this audio up, please? You hear the gunshots? Watch. This is Libya. Now let's go to Yemen. 
Yemen is demanding for the immediate resignation of their president of 32 years. One person has been killed during the rallies. Government supporters attacked protesters with electroshock sticks and protesters are, I love this. Can you show me the picture? Here it is, oh yeah. Che. Oh, and the word change in English. How about in Bahrain today? It's a very important area of the world. This is where the Fifth Fleet is headquartered. The Fifth Fleet is kind of a big deal. It's known as the Middle East anchor of the U.S. defense strategy. And I guess we're not supposed to worry about Bahrain, right? I mean, because we were told that it's quite stable and progressing wonderfully by Hillary Clinton. I am um, very impressed by the progress that uh, Bahrain is uh, making on all fronts, economically, politically, mm. socially. Yeah, me too.